Welcome back. Today we are going through lesson one three, which is all about the properties of exponents. So another foundational piece of algebra two is understanding how exponents work. So what you're going to do is kind of use these examples to write some rules and then figure out kind of what the main idea is here. So um, we're going to use x and y for our base values and a and b for our exponent values, just so we kind of keep everything consistent here as we work through it. So the first property that we're going to talk about is the zero rules. So there's two different things going on here. We can have a zero base or we can have a zero exponent. So you can see when zero is the base, we're multiplying zero by itself over and over and over again. So the rule is that zero times itself, no matter how many times, is going to be zero. Zero to any power is zero. It doesn't matter what that exponent is. The, the other situation is if zero is in the exponent. Okay, And the rule there is that any value to a zero power is one. So um, x, whatever the base is, doesn't matter, to the zero power is always going to equal one. All right, our second property that we're going to talk about is some product rules. Remember, product is the answer to a multiplication situation. So the product rule, when things have the same base, so we're multiplying, you can see here, x to some power times x to some power, that means that we have two x's times five x's multiplied together, and that would give me x to the seventh. So the idea here is that when multiplying powers with the same base, you add the exponents. So when we have the same base, we add the exponents. So the generic form of that is if I have x to some power times x to a different power, the answer would be to add those exponents together and keep it as an exponent. Now, the other product rule that we can have is where we have two things being raised to the same exponent. So, for example, if we have like 4 and x being raised to the same power, let's say squared, I can separate that into 4 squared and x squared. So that would give me 16x squared. So you can see that when we raise a product to a power, we can distribute that power to each part of the product, which is the factors. All right, next up we have the quotient rules. So same idea here. We can have quotients with the same base. So where we're dividing, for example, like x to the seventh over x to the fifth. When we have that, the rule is that when dividing powers with the same base, we're going to subtract the exponents. So that would be x squared in this example. So product from up above, when we're multiplying with the same base, we add the exponents. Quotient, when we're dividing, we subtract the exponents. And then same kind of idea with the quotient rule around the same exponent. So if I have two things being divided, but they're being raised to the same power, I can essentially distribute that power to both parts of the quotient and simplify from there. So the generic rule there would be that if I have two separate bases, different bases, but the same exponent, I can write it as the first base to the exponent over the second base to the same exponent. Right. Our next properties are the power rules. So we can have a power of a power. And when this is happening, it basically means that when we raise a power to a second power, we're going to multiply those exponents together. So we've now seen when to add, when to, or sorry, when to subtract, and then when to multiply. So you can see the um, example here. If I have an x squared being raised to the seventh power, I would multiply those together. Same thing here. If I have a power of x minus 4, I would multiply it by the 2. So the generic rule would look like a base to a power raised to another power it means we're going to take those powers and multiply them. 
Now we can also have a radical as a power. So we're gonna use this a little bit later in another lesson, but essentially what it means is that a fractional exponent can be written as a radical where the denominator is the index on the radical. So for example, if I have a radical that looks like this, that index here becomes the denominator of the fractional exponent. So you keep that same numerator and then you just add the index as the denominator. Okay, then we have just two more exponent rules here. We've got our negative exponents. So when we have negative exponents, if the numerator is raised to a negative power, we move it to the denominator. You keep the exponent, but we get rid of the negative. So what happens here, um, if it's in the numerator already, so we have 7x to the third over x to the fifth, we can see that those x's reduce just like we had before, and we have two left in the bottom. To rewrite that, we can rewrite it as a negative exponent. So when we have a negative exponent on a base, that means I can rewrite it with a positive exponent if I move it to the denominator. And then the same thing is true if it starts in the denominator, we can rewrite it in the numerator. So for example, if I have five over x to the negative third power, to make that positive, it would be positive five x to the third power. So we move it out of the denominator to the numerator and we drop the negative. So if it's in the, whoops, wrong variable. If it's in the denominator to start with, we can make it positive. Last one we have is the negative base rule. So this one essentially says if a negative value is raised to an even exponent, then we're gonna get a positive value. And if it's a negative value to an odd exponent, the answer is going to be negative. So here's kind of what that looks like. If I take a negative value, let's say negative five, and raise it to an even exponent, a negative times a negative, an even number of times is gonna give me a positive answer. But if I take a negative base to an odd exponent, that is going to give me a negative answer. So those are all the pro possible properties of exponents that we're gonna use. So on the back, we have some example problems. And I'm gonna go through about six of these just to kind of get our answers going. And then you should try the rest and check with your teacher on making sure those are right. So when we simplify these, our answer, we need to make sure it has no, um, or not more than one of the same base and our exponents need to be positive. So let's start with number one here. On this one, I can see that I have the same base here, so I'm gonna combine these by multiplying the negative seven and negative two, because those are just numbers. And then when I multiply and I add my exponents, so that would be x to the sixth power. And then it's still being multiplied by negative x squared. So we're gonna multiply those now. 14 times a negative is negative 14. And x two, or x sixth and x to the second, Combining those would give me x to the eighth when I add those. All right, we're gonna jump ahead a little bit here to number five. So for number five, we have a fraction going on and we have some stuff to simplify in the numerator before we can do the division. So the first thing I'm gonna do is combine these. I've got negative 60 and then adding the exponents. Remember this M has a one there. Since there is an M, it means it has a first power. We just don't write it. So when we add those together, I would get M to the third. And N, I have five plus three, which is eight. Now I've got a simplified numerator and a simplified denominator, and I can start dividing. So negative 60 divided by 15, those are just numbers, so it'd be negative four. I notice that I have m to the third over m to the third, those reduce to one, so I don't need to write it. 
And then we have N8 and N2 dividing, we subtract. So it'd be negative four N to the sixth. All right, so let's go at number six next. So the first thing I'm gonna do is this negative two to the third power. Remember that's an odd power, so it's gonna be a negative eight x to the fourth, and then I'm gonna distribute this squared. So y squared and z squared. And then in the denominator, we've got three squared, which is nine x y cubed z. So simplifying that, negative eight ninths, I can't reduce, so I'm gonna leave it as negative eight ninths. I have four minus one, so that would be x to the third in the numerator, because I would have three left in the numerator. Here I have three minus two, and there's one left in the denominator. And then I have two minus one, which is z. So my final answer is this guy right here. All right, we're gonna skip number seven and go to number eight. Um, number eight is a good one because it has a zero exponent and we should remember hopefully from our zero exponent rules anything to the zero power is one so we can simplify that and then to get rid of my negative remember i flip it to the numerator and make it positive so it'd be just x to the fourth all right and then we're going to do the last two as some examples here again you should go and do all of them and check your work with your teacher all right, so for number 11 here, we have a power being raised to a power, but let's simplify the inside a little bit first because I see some negative exponents here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify that negative 3. When we have that negative outside the parentheses, that power that's negative outside the parentheses, we want to just go ahead and fix that right away. So to do that, that means since it has the negative here, everything in the denominator is going to move to the top and everything in the numerator is going to move to the bottom. And when I do that, it makes my exponent positive. Then I can distribute that exponent. So six cubed is 216. And then I would have y to the negative sixth. 5 cubed is 125, and x to the negative 6. So my numbers are fine, 216, 125. I just need to fix these negative exponents by moving them. So x to the 6th is going to move to the top, and y to the 6th is going to move to the bottom. All right, and then our last problem here. Let's simplify if we can here. So the thing about these properties is you can do them in some different orders and get to the same answer. So if you did it in a different way, that's okay, um, as long as we end up in the same spot. So I'm gonna start by, since I have the same bases here, I'm gonna simplify these. So this is gonna give me a to the seventh, because five minus negative two is seven, and then B squared over B, that's just going to leave B to the first. So I can at least simplify that. And then over here, I can move these Bs to the bottom. So I'd have one, right, because there'd be nothing essentially left in the numerator. So we use one as that placeholder. I'd have 2A to the fifth, B to the third. That's raised to the third power, all to the negative one power. All right, so let's simplify a little bit here. That would be negative 14 and negative two. So I'm gonna write that as one over a to the 14th to get rid of the negative. And b to the second would also move down there since it was negative. And then we're multiplying that. Let's see, let's distribute this cubed out. So one cubed is still one, two cubed is eight. a to the 15th and b to the ninth, and that's all still being raised to the negative one power. Now we can combine our two fractions here. So when I do that, I would have one over, that eight would come out in front because it's the only constant. Then I have eight of the 14th and eight of the 15th that are being multiplied, so it'd become eight of the 29th, and b to the second, b to the ninth, would be b to the 11th. 
to the negative one power. To fix that negative one power, I just flip where everything is. So actually when I flip it, I wouldn't need the fraction because it would just be over one. So it would be eight a to the 29th, b to the 11th with no denominator because it would just be over one. All right, those are your properties of exponents. We'll see you next time.